on to question number four. Okay, what's a typical day like in your role, activities and hours? This is the part you're, I'm gonna lose all the bedside nurses when you tell her this, tell them this. It's over, it's over. So, so when um, I took the role, it was enticing because it pretty much 90% is banker's hours. Um, there is no finite start time or end time. I will say I have had 6 a.m. meetings because it needed to suit the clinicians yeah. that were, you know, going off shift or before they came on shift, things like that. Um, or, you know, five, six, seven o'clock at night if we needed to go to a division meeting or something like that. Um, and now working with providers, it is even more so. So, but that being said, again, lots of flexibility. Um, autonomy to create your own schedule, you know, um, the work ethic has to be there to get your work done. Yep. Um, you know, I do have to sometimes block my calendar to prep for something important in another day or two. So I don't like lose track of time and um, catch myself, um, you know, procrastinating. Um, that's not typically my style, but um, no so um, I've had to learn those steps along the way. Um, and again, when you're at the bedside, you have you know, your, your meds, your assessment, you know, you get report, you, you know, um, you kind of go um, in a somewhat um, standard process through your day. Yeah. Um, that is not this role at all. Every single day is different. Um, that being said, um, we do take call. And um, that is where I learn the most, um, because it's, it stretches me to um, some I ask things that I am not savvy with yet. And I've been doing this for seven years. So wow. it's, it, yeah, um, wow. just nuances about what could work or why this person can't get to this part of the chart or anything like that. Um, and again, just tapping a friend, phone a friend, you know, figuring it out. So I learn lots um, when I'm on call. Um, so that's usually a week at a time, 24 seven. Wow. Um, but um, it's not... Um, 2 a.m., you know, that kind of thing. They have a tiered escalation. You know, if something is like a, I can't find this and um, whatever, you can, you have like two days to get back to them. It's not instant. That's good. Um, so it just depends. Um, and that being said, there's also been <clears throat> with COVID, um, which is something we'll deal with a little bit later in the questions. Mm -hmm. But um, when big things come up, if we have a, you know, the system goes down, um, bad, not even bad storms. It could just be the servers in the building in Kansas crashed, you know, or a plane crashed into it or something. Um, if there's a downtime or, um, you know, the lab system, something's going on. Um, there's been instances of that where they send out a text page to everybody and whoever can jumps on the bridge line call. We all contribute. Um, if there's things that nursing informatics can help with, um, with sending out communication to all the clinical folks or actually going to the unit and um, assisting, you know, um, we just have, we have downtime procedures, you know, that kind of thing that we'll follow, but being a part of the team um, to quickly address, you know, things um, as needed. Um, and then when there's been projects, whether they're small ones to a dedicated unit or an organizational level um, project, we are expected to participate in the go live, um, like the command center and such. So we could work nights, evenings, you know, whatever. We could be remote, we could be on site, like it just depends um, on the project details. So, but, you know, 90% of the time um, we are, you know, eight to five, whatever. Wow. Um, and then since COVID, I've been 90% remote. Um, and I think they're seeing that it is very doable. Um, I, Penn State Health actually, within three weeks, they had 5,000 people remote. Oh my gosh, wow. And we had had that in place for folks who needed like a half day, uh, you know, mm -hmm. for whatever personal appointment, whatever. And then they would work remote the other half or whatever, but no one was really truly remote. Um, so yeah, and within a few more weeks of that, it was, you know, over 7,000. So that's, a, that's deploying a lot of infrastructure, you know, to get that set. So um, we, you know, we all kind of supported that as wow. well. So, you know, pretty much that's um, a typical day is, is not um, in the books. <laughs> um, and the um, types of activities, um, you know, we could be leading a meeting to discuss a request or an issue um, 
So we'd have to plan the agenda, send out the invites, make sure we identify the correct stakeholders, like take minutes, send them out, follow up, like all of those kind of things. Um, we could also be invited to a larger meeting and be um, representing IS and the informatics role to try and understand, you know, again, the clinical workflow, ask a few questions, but mostly stay silent, take it all in. Um, and also then take items for follow-up, you know, and go back to my IS counterparts, talk things through, and then get back to the larger group. Um, a lot of it is just dependent, uh, and that's a variation. I could run two meetings in a day, be part of a large project meeting another part of the day, and then um, spend um, some time doing follow-up on a couple other things the rest of my day. And again, a lot of ongoing preparation. Um, I have never had a day where I have nothing to do and <laughs> plenty of time. Uh, <laughs> <there>. <laughs> that will never happen. The, definitely yeah. with the way things are going too. You're just going to get yeah. busier, I would imagine. Yep. So, and another part of that is, um, you know, 30 years of ICU, I had a bit of, um, I had that edge to me where I, <laughs> I've been called um, assertive on a good day. <laughs> um, so, there's, it was definitely a learning curve for me to step back and learn how to actively listen, you know, and not say a word. Um, very difficult. So yeah. if, if um, that self-awareness of, of you coming into something is really, really important. And again, I was um, fostered by my manager, which was huge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you get to a certain point in your life and, you know, you, in ICU, I could get away with all kinds of things because I was advocating for my patient, <laughs> not so much in this role. Um, you know, you're working again with, you could be working with a housekeeper to literally figure out how they're notified that they need to clean a room, Wow. how long it takes them to respond and how long it takes them to clean the room until they can turn it back over. And, you know, we have a system called teletracking and that's where all of that happens and they need to interact with it. So I could be working with a housekeeper and then later that afternoon, I could be working with a medical director of the cardiothoracic ICU. So, um, you know, there's, there's a, there needs to be a deep appreciation and respect for every single role that you're, you know, working with. Um, and, you know, IS is, um, I've worked with some phenomenal IS analysts who truly understand clinical flow. They have a great rapport with clinicians, wow. but there's still sometimes just a little disconnect. And it's not really the language per se, but it's like, oh, they'll, they'll be like, well, what's the big deal? They can just go up there and click that. And I'm like, mm, yeah, no, mm -mm. <laughs> they'll have gloves on. They have goop on for whatever they were doing. They need yeah. <laughs> like some things, you know. So um, being that liaison is another, you know, huge part of our role um, between clinicians and IS and vice versa. Wow. So. Well put, Lisa, yeah. well put. 